Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. We'll be looking at the first week of October 2023. That's October 1st through October 7th. First falls on a Sunday and Saturday is the 7th. So this is going to be another one of those months that goes by really, really fast. All right, let's take a look at the week ahead. All right. Well, this is just a, a, a very short review of the Kabbalah. Um, we have the seven vibration located here connected to the chariot um, through the universal year vibration. The vibration of the, the of October is a 10. 10 one sits here on the tree of life and it is associated with the wheel of fortune. And then we have the combination of the universal year seven and the monthly vibration of 10. And we get a 17, eight vibration, which is right here on the tree of life. And it is the star card. So we're talking about moving on our path, why we are here, our soul's purpose through the changes, the ups and downs, and an ability to connect with our uh, higher vibrational selves through meditation and finding our guiding star. So that's just a little bit of a preview. So let's let's look at the nuts and bolts because sometimes I feel like the astrology is the nuts and bolts of the situation. And um, so it, as you look at this, we have the tree of life in the middle and I have all the, um, uh, each one of these sephirs are associated with the planet. And I do have the signs of those planets in here. That's how you work with this. Okay. So we have Sunday, October 1st. It vibrates to an 18.9 vibration. We have, uh, we start the month with Mars making an in conjunct to Uranus. What you will notice this week is the word in conjunct is a lot, is here a lot. And it's, I've highlighted it in green. So you can see just how many in conjuncts there are. Um, one major these are major conjuncts, one, two, three, four, five, six, almost one a day. Well, you know, if you even it out, if you, if you do the math, it's almost one a day. In conjuncts are about making adjustments. Um, it is both, uh, and, and this month and this week, we'll have to make mental adjustments as well as emotional adjustments. And uh, this is... Uh, it's difficult with in conjuncts. It's and I have them in my chart, so I can speak to this. Um, it moving in a straight line is very difficult. Like even if you think you're going in the right direction, there's always like things that come up that make you realize that you have to change. There's like a little bit of a change of course, a change of course. So it's almost like you're fine tuning. There's a fine tuning energy to the in conjunct, and when you don't hit it just right, it doesn't work. See, that's how the works especially when you have yodes and we have a ton and we said something else a ton of yodes this week and of course we would because we have all these in conjuncts and some of them are working together okay so um so you see the green that's in conjunct you see the red that's mars i did mars in red and so we can see that mars is uh active this month and i also have the the word conjunction in red because the conjunction is 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 an energy like mars it's like oh let's do it like that's that's the conjunction let's start it um i have mercury here in blue we do have some some things to mercury we have one major opposition this week um and we do have some trines and we do have some Venus I put in this color here. We have some Venus work, but we'll take a look at this. All right, Monday, October 2nd, which is a 19-1 vibration, we have Mercury opposing Neptune. This is the culmination of seeds planted at the Mercury-Neptune conjunction, which occurred 316-23 uh, at 26 degrees of Pisces. We will look at that. Uh, on Tuesday the 3rd, Vibrating to a 20 over 2 vibration, that is the judgment card. This is the moon card. This is the sun card. This is the judgment card. We have Mercury making a trine to Pluto. The interesting thing about the judgment card it is connected to the planet Pluto. And this is a, a deep penetrating mind. It is a waning trine. So it's about sharing our understanding with each other. 
And when we're dealing with Pluto, especially in Capricorn, we're dealing with issues of abuse of power, issues of power, um, issues of agency, issues of um, soul, soul. We also have on the third with continuing under that vibration of the judgment card, Venus make an in conjunct to Neptune, a tendency to perceive others through a distorted lens, projecting onto them qualities and characteristics that they may not truly, that may not truly exist. So there can be a little bit of a delusionary quality or illusionary quality with this um, combination. Um, on Wednesday, October 4th, we have Mars conjunct the south node of the moon. The south node of the moon is about the past. And so we also have Pluto still squaring the nodes in aspect, not as tightly as it did when it first moved in, but tight enough and requiring us to renegotiate our contracts. And we have Mars here on the south node. There's going to be a lot of energy to renegotiating contracts. In fact, this Mars will eventually make a square to Pluto. That actually doesn't happen until next week. Um, but there is a lot of pressure for things to change, for the way we relate to one another to do it, to do it in a different way, uh, in a way that's going to work, as opposed to all the ways that don't work and continue to wound us. On Wednesday, the 4th, we also have Mercury's ingress into Libra. So Mercury finally leaves Virgo. Mercury's been in Virgo since forever, it seems. We had that Mercury retrograde in Virgo. So now Mercury moves into Libra. And Mercury, of course, loves being in Virgo. I'm not sure it really has an opinion about being in Libra. Just knowing that uh, Mercury's tendency to make uh to to analyze everything actually with all that time in virgo perhaps the mercury in in uh, libra will be decisions based on the analysis the previous analysis so there's a lot of that and of course we're expecting to hear this week about uh, a gag order on the former president by tanya chutkin judge chutkin who's the judge in charge of the january 6th uh, Washington, D.C. trial of Donald Trump, which as it stands now, I believe is ready to start in March 3rd, March 4th or something, the day before Super Tuesday. All right. Um, on Thursday, the 5th, we have Mercury making and making in conjunct to Saturn, exercising discernment and making wise decisions on how to bring ideas into reality. This is, uh, you know, this is a changing of the mind. It is a waning in conjunct. So it's not just about changing your mind, but it's also, uh, it does to a certain extent challenge your certainty that you know what you're talking about. So it's always a little bit of a, a, a challenge with in conjuncts and then in conjuncts to Saturn. Do I measure up? Do I know enough? Do I, yeah, you do. You do. It's just that you have to be willing to make the adjustments necessary. I said in my video this morning for the the end of the month, because we have, of course, we, of course, we have it in conjunct today, the end of the month, um, that uh, coming up is is uh, will need a lot of adjustments, and so I think chiropractors will be really busy. So so go to your chiropractor. <laughs> um, we also have on the fifth. We have Mars making a waning in conjunct to Neptune. This is a struggle with setting realistic boundaries with others and determining what you can expect from yourself. This kind of sounds a little bit like the conundrum that um, the Speaker of the House has found himself in. On Friday, October 6th, we have Venus making an in conjunct to Pluto. Your inclination to take overly burdensome roles in the lives of others. And lastly, uh, on Sunday, the 7th, we have the sun make an in conjunct to Jupiter. Now, remember, the sun and Jupiter, the two largest planetary bodies in our solar system, making up like, I think, 99% of the mass of our solar system. 
And in fact, Jupiter is is uh, often considered a dwarf uh, a, a dwarf star that has uh, gone to sleep, a sleeping star, I think, a brown star or something. I don't know. Um, and of course, Jupiter has like many, many moons around it. So it's got all kinds of worlds going around it. So it is pretty powerful force. And then of course the sun, but the sun and Jupiter can make us arrogant. The sun and Jupiter can make us think too big and think too much and, you know, not, um, in fact, the, um, Trump has a son um, trying his Jupiter. And so he is naturally like uh, overly like, ah, so these, try, these sex house, I mean, these in conjunction are not going to be good for him or going to be good for us because they're not good for him. Maybe I should say. The stimulus, powerful restlessness and desire to push beyond your limits. So be careful, especially because you have to go to the chiropractor. Don't push yourself too hard on that one. Okay, let's take a look at, at all of the specifics now. This is uh, this is a lot, so be prepared, guys. All right, so October 1st, Mars in conjunct Uranus, a deep yearning for something beyond the ordinary. That's Uranus. Uranus doesn't want to do it like anybody else. Okay. Mars, of course, is the energy, is the energy, it's energy. It's it's and it can be aggression. And so whenever we're dealing with Mars and Uranus together, this can be unexpected aggressive things. Unexpected though. So it may not happen where you think it's going to happen. Let's put it that way. Now, what I've done here is I've uh, outlined the two planets associated with this. Now, this is a chart for the U.S., so apologies to anybody else. I'm not going to specifically talk about the U.S. per se. Well, I actually have, but not uh, per se, uh, except to you know maybe point out a few things that I that about the upcoming week that I that I'm aware of. Um, but this is the the aspect we're looking at. But you can see that it actually creates a yod. We have uh, Neptune here. We have Uranus here. These are both transpersonal planets, and they're making this in conjunct to um, to Neptune. Now, this is actually a little wide to be a co in conjunct. I sort of put it in there although there it is I guess it's not too wide it's only three degrees away um so this Mars as it's in conjunct to Uranus is also influenced by Neptune and then if you look we have another yod here because we have Venus which incidentally disposits um disposits Mars disposits Uranus and doesn't despise it Neptune, but Venus is 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 um, exalted in the sign of Pisces, and Pis and and Neptune, which is the ruler of Pisces, is in its rulership, is very powerful. So in a way, Venus is kind of in charge, and Venus is still not quite out of her shadow. So there's a lot of uh, energy for this. Venus energy to come out in a very surprising way so we'll see what that means I'm not sure but I can almost see it it's like the lioness comes out and then she gets to work because Venus goes into Virgo okay both planets are in Venus rule signs Venus is at 24 degrees of Leo so Venus is giving us a clue through these Sabian symbols right says here, totally concentrated upon inner spiritual attainment, a man is sitting in a state of complete neglect of bodily appearance and cleanliness. The key word here is total concentration. Just take out the, the, the neglect of bodily appearance and cleanliness because we know Venus would never, Venus and Leo, that would never be a thing. But the idea of total concentration so this requires total concentration on our part. Now the vibration of the day is is the uh, is is the moon card, which can be lunacy. So be aware and take care on this day. So if we look at the 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 actual planets and the symbols around the planets, we have Mars here at 23 degrees of Libra. It says a Chancellor's voice heralds sunrise 
a creative and joyous response to life processes. A chancellor is a rooster. Just sounds better. In conjunct, uh, Uranus at 23 degrees of Taurus. Incidentally, back in 20 in December of 2020, Saturn and Pluto made a conjunction. Sorry, Saturn, it, it, they did, but that was that was the beginning of 2020. Saturn and Jupiter made their every 20 year conjunction and it was in the sign of Aquarius. It was the first degree of Aquarius. Some people said it's the, it was the first, uh, it was like the beginning of the Aquarian age. I'm, I'm not no, I'm not saying I believe that or not, but certainly putting Aquarius in the spotlight and now Pluto's going to be in Aquarius for 20 years. So that's another big spotlight, right? But before that, in, tw in 2000, there was one and it was at 23 degrees of Taurus. So this is actually connected to the last cycle of uh, Pluto, um, Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, and that was uh, when um, we had George W. Bush as president, just to put it in historical con context. Uranus at 23 degrees of Taurus, a jewelry shop filled with valuable gems, the social confirmation of natural excellence. Natural excellence. In a way, these two symbols are asking us to be our best selves. To be our best selves. Okay, let's see what continues. I'm telling you, it's quite the week. This is just the beginning, guys. All right, let me see here. All right, uh, we have the opposition between Mercury and uh, Neptune. This is part of a synodic cycle that began at the initial conjunction of Mercury and Neptune. That occurred on March 16th of 2023. The chart is right here. We can see that the say uh, that it that it occurred at 26 degrees of uh, Pisces, and the opposition. We still have. Neptune at 26 degrees of Pisces. So the initial sort of seed, uh, a very thin moon crescent appears at sunset. Different people realize that the time has come to go ahead with their different projects. This is about us doing what we're good at, all in alignment with what's good for everybody, right? For the good of all. Um, and we have the opposition now on this day on the, uh, was it the second already? We're at the second. Um, incidentally, the vibration of March 16th, 2023 was the tower. And now we're at the sun. The tower is illumination and the sun is revelation. The Sabian symbol for um, Mercury, hold on, in powerfully placed in Virgo, Neptune powerfully placed in Pisces in their in their rulerships. A boy with a censer serves a priest near the altar, the first stage of actual participation in the great ritual of planetary evolution. The time has come. The time has come. Mercury waning trying to Pluto. The ability to communicate with intensity and power or the ability to see and understand the deeper hidden motivations of others both <laughs> why not why not this is a disseminating trine and what are we disseminating we're disseminating of the fruits of the seeds planted at the mercury pluto conjunction that occurred um on the 10th of uh, february 2023 that was a 19 one vibration on that day that is uh, that is uh revelations the sun card at the at 29 degrees of capricorn a woman reading tea leaves the key word here clairvoyance clairvoyance so this is your ability to see the signs um mercury at 28 degrees 
of Virgo, a bald-headed man who has seized power, the sheer power of personality in a time that calls for a decision. Trining Pluto at 28 degrees of Capricorn, a large Avery. I mean, this could be um, Biden, although most people don't see him as um, um, powerful. He he's got a lot of Scorpio. The man has a lot of um, has a lot of power. Um, and the large Avery, the, the symbol of the large Avery, that 28 degrees of Capricorn is the um, Pluto of the United States. Um, so this is a powerful time of dissemination of our understanding. Okay, dissemination of our understanding. And uh, we can see here, uh, let's see, here's Pluto. And this is for the U.S. So we have Pluto right on the ascendant. And it is in a trine to uh, Mercury here in the eighth house. This is our shared resources. This very well could be uh, what's going on with the closing down of the government. Um, we also have, um, just to, to point this out, there's a trine also between the uh, Pluto and Mercury, it's, it's wide, it's not as tight, but it is to Uranus. So we have a grand trine in um, Earth connected to this trine. Um, and it's the two transpersonal planets, right? Uh, illumination and transformation and the mind, and the mind. Uh, if you have anything at 27, 28 degrees of um, Virgo, this is a very potent time. If you have anything at 27 degrees of a sign, it's very potent. I know that Kamala Harris has her sun and her moon at the 27th degree. Um, Barack Obama has his Saturn close to this degree. I know because it's the degree of my Saturn. 27 degrees, around 27. I think it's, he has maybe 26 um, of uh, of Capricorn. Um, so this is a powerful time. That's that's all I'm gonna say. I don't really know what's gonna happen. I just know something's gonna happen. It's gonna be big. Here we have Venus in conjunct Neptune. Here's Venus. Here's Neptune. Um, she, this is part of a yod configuration with Pluto. Um, this is the third of three exact inconjuncts, all of which involved is were involved in, well, not the second one, not the second one was involved. Well, it must have been, yeah. All which were involved in this yod. So what's happened is Venus came through this, this came to this degree, had was the point of a yod between Pluto and Neptune. And then she went retrograde. So she went through this gateway again. I like to call it the gauntlet. And if you see what's opposite this is Saturn. Saturn is it's like, okay, what do you got to let go of? Saturn, what doesn't work anymore? What is hurting you? This is Saturn in, in, in uh, Pisces. What undoes you? we are become very aware of what, it, what undoes us in this process. Um, so these are the times when um, we had the inconjunct to Neptune. The first one occurred on July 15th. That happened to be a 2911 vibration. 2911 is the vibration of light, light, and commodifying that light. Okay. The, uh, the second one occurred on July 30th. We had a uh, 2023. That was a 448 vibration. Uh, that is a master number. And then this last one, of course, on October 3rd, which is the 20 over 2 vibration, the judgment card, waking up from the dead, guys inevitable the inevitable uh rising up the inevitable evolution this path is connected to pluto on the tree of life venus at 26 degrees of leo after the heavy storm a rainbow can't make this stuff up linking above and below 
the covenant with one's divine nature. Remember I said you have to be in alignment with your divine nature. Promise of immortality. Well, we're, we are all immortal. It's the physical body that changes and shifts and leaves and we come back. We're immortal. Our spirit is immortal. Um, in conjunct Neptune at 26 of Pisces, watching a very thin moon, the crescent appearing at sunset, different people realize that the time has come to go ahead with their different projects. We also have Black Moon Lilith here in Virgo. Opposite. Saturn. I, 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 I just, it's just so intensely intense. I don't know how else to explain this energy. I don't even know if these words make any sense. Well, I mean, I know they make sense, but I mean, I feel like there's such, um, so much to, to, to that, that could be said that might be said that it, it's almost like it's such a thing that I'm not sure words can hold it or can, can convey it. I think that's what I want to say. Obviously, I'm having trouble with it, right? On the 4th of October, we have Mercury ingress into Libra. Mercury goes into Libra. A Venus ruled sign. Oh, Venus is in charge again. Um, <laughs> Sabian symbol of Mercury at one degree of Libra, a collection of perfect specimens of many biological forms, a butterfly displays its beauty of its wings, its body impaled by a fine dart. The individual is made sacred, becoming a pure embodiment of the archetype. Venus um, is the ruler, of course, of Libra. And so it disposits this Mercury. Venus ruler of Libra is at 27 degrees of Leo the luminescence of a dawn in the eastern sky. The keynote here is the exalted challenge of new opportunities at the threshold of a new cycle. You can see that we keep this, this, this symbolism, the crescent moon, the crescent moon at night. Crescent moon is a time of beginnings. The one you see at night is, is a new to crescent. It's the struggle against the inertia of the past in order to build and to and to figure out what kind of foundations we're going to need to build and act upon to support the newness. Um, so these are very powerful uh, energies that are being born at this time. All right. As I'm reading this, I'll tell you what came up. House approves amendment from Marjorie Taylor Greene to cut Lloyd Austin's salary to a dollar. Um, I can't remember who Lloyd Austin is. He's he's some sort of anyway. <laughs> he's just making her get get whatever she wants because uh, this is just like it's almost like I feel like the Freedom Caucus is at the vomitorium right now. And they're just vomiting everything that they that they want. And it's just going to be like, okay, well, now it sinks in here. Let's clean up and let's get to work. That's what that feels like to me. Sorry about the vomitorium thing. All right. Mars, October 4th. Mars conjunct the south node of the moon. Oh. Now, I just want to mention that Mars is conjunct the south node of the moon. And I don't have it here, but Eris... The goddess of discord is conjunct the north node of the moon and Mars and Eris opposing each other. Um, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Mars conjunct the south node at 25 degrees of Libra. The sight of an autumn leaf brings a pilgrim the sudden revelation of the mysteries of life and death. The ability to see the most profound things in the simplest things is usually a sign of somebody who's very connected. If, you, if you're that person, you are connected. 
The ability to discover in every experience a transcendent or cosmic meaning, every death is an omen of rebirth. And the clear and the word here is clear seeing, or really clear clairvoyance, which is the same thing. Clear seeing. Venus at the at uh, the ruler of Libra, right? So it's this whole south node configuration is disposited by that Venus. In Leo, in uh, let me see, Venus in Leo, yes, Venus in Leo, Venus as the ruler of Libra, the south node, the luminescence of dawn in the eastern sky, the exalted challenge of new opportunities at the threshold of a new cycle. And what do we have as the vibration, the world, the end of one cycle and the beginning of another? This is birth, people. This is birth on the tree of life. This is located between Yisad and Malkuth. It is the path that we all come through our mother, the birth canal of our mother to be manifested on, on the physical plane. It's also the path we leave from. It's a, it's a Saturn path. It's a Saturn path. It's the path of Saturn. And here we have Saturn. This is a Saturn card. And here's Saturn standing there at the threshold to Venus. Now Venus is going to come and eventually she's going to change. She's going to move into Pisces. I mean, she's going to move into Virgo and she's going to oppose that Saturn. And that's a big time of birth as well. On October 5th, Mercury in conjunct Saturn. Uh, putting your life in order will require exercising positive judgment as how as to how to get the larger projects you envision, envision manifested. We're in the fool vibration here. This is a 22-4. This is a Uranus vibration. What's Uranus doing? Let's see. Where's Uranus? Here's Uranus. Is Uranus touching either one of these planets here? No. Okay. Just wanted to check. Um, this is a waning in conjunct, so it will require adjustments that are psychological and permanent. This began at the Mercury-Saturn conjunction that happened on the 2nd of March of this year, 2023. It was a 12-3 vibration, which is the hanged man. Serenity prayer, knowing what you can change and doing it, knowing what you can't and letting it go, accepting it, acceptance. Looking at life from a different perspective. This conjunction occurred at the last degree of Aquarius. Saturn and Mercury, Saturn is reality and Mercury is our mind. Deeply rooted in the past of a very ancient culture, a spiritual brotherhood in which many individual minds are merged into the glowing light of a unanimous consciousness is revealed to one who has emerged successfully from this metamorphosis. So, my fellow livers and livers, not livers like liver, the like organ, but people who live in the, who have been living in the cocoon and you've been pressing your wings against the cocoon, it's finally time to fly. The chrysalis is open. Your wings are drying out in the sun and it's time to fly. October 5th, Mars in conjunct Neptune. Struggling with setting realistic boundaries with others and determining what you can expect from yourself. This synod began at the Mars-Neptune conjunction, which began last year, Mars. Synods with Mars are always two years, so it usually takes about a year to get to the, um, um, the opposition. Um, and then um, beyond that opposition. And this aspect is the next aspect, the next difficult aspect after the opposition, really. Um, but the beginning of this started at this degree. It was the 25th degree of Pisces. And it says a religious organization succeeds in overcoming the corrupting influence of perverted practices and materialized ideals. 
I'm just going to leave that in the air and you can make what you can make of it what you want. But realize that Eris is still opposite Mars at this point and still conjunct the North Node. Eris is the goddess of discontent. This is all the people on strike in all the countries and people want to take control of their lives. They don't want to be under the thumb of people who say that they know better, who are actually don't uh, don't know better and are really kind of devilish, right? greedy, the seven deadly sins, the people in charge. All right, next, October 6th, Venus making a waning in conjunct to Pluto. Now, remember I said Venus is has been in this yod with Pluto and Neptune, but it was never exact. Venus was never exactly in conjunct Pluto. This aspect was within orb when Venus stationed retrograde on July 22nd, 2023, but never quite made it to exactitude. This is the first aspect that Venus makes as she comes out of her shadow. As she comes out of her shadow, she's not quite out. She's almost out. She can see daylight and Pluto stands there saying, oh yeah. Aspects between Venus and Pluto are intense and can deal with issues of power and abuse of power. This cycle actually began on January 1st. It was the first aspect of the year for the United States, actually, unless there was, was another country that had it before, like Guam, is, I think, had it first. But on this side, continental, we'll talk about the continental U.S. Um, it was the first aspect that happened. Um, and um, Venus in conjunct, and it happened at um, 28 degrees of um, of Capricorn on the United States, Pluto. So Pluto on Pluto. Uh, Venus in conjunct Pluto, emotional adjustments needed to foster growth and healing. It becomes essential for you to explore the root cause of these fears, especially your fear of abandonment, uh, which often stem from a lack of healthy boundaries and positive self-esteem. The better you feel about yourself and not the facade, because the facade, all the facades are coming down. The tower, the tower brought all those facades down in um, September. We're seeing who people truly are. Um, now it requires a sense of self-love from a place of not e non-ego, that you care enough about yourself and your fellow man that you that you will not put up with abuse. Okay. Let's go continue. Okay. October 7th, um, we have a sun has is waxing in conjunct to Jupiter. Sun is a waxing in conjunct to Jupiter. So uh, as I said, the sun and Jupiter, the two largest things on the in the uh, in the solar system. The sun waxing in conjunct to Jupiter. Mental adjustments are needed due to analysis of where you may have gone too far with your ego. Part of this part of this is part of the synod that began with the Jupiter Sun conjunction on April 11th, 2023. That was a 22 4 day. That was a fool day. The fool 22 4. It occurred at 22 degrees of Aries, the gate to the garden of all fulfilled desires, abundance made possible by human togetherness and cooperation. I want to point out this Sabian symbol that began this synod between the sun and Jupiter expansion of light 
expansion of understanding, okay? Uh, expansion of energy uh, occurred at 22 degrees of Aries. The eclipse, the solar eclipse that's happening at the end of next week is at 22 degrees of Libra, opposite this point. It's as if it's all coming together. Let's take a look at the week ahead. Uh, just in, you know, we're not going to do this specifically, but we'll look at it. On Sunday, we have Venus ingress into Virgo. She gets out of her shadow, spends a day in, in Leo, and moves into Virgo. And with Venus in Virgo and, Nept and, and Mercury in, in, um, in Libra, we have mutual reception between Venus and and uh, Mercury, which I think will help with uh, us talking about things. Like I don't, I think this first week we're not going to get anywhere in the United States government. It is until the second week that things change, um, that we start to work together. I think, or or something happens that it changes the the whole thing. Okay. Um, we also have on Sunday, Mars making a last quarter square to Pluto, this crisis in consciousness square. On Tuesday, the 10th, we have Venus make that opposition to Saturn. Remember I said she's going to oppose Saturn as she comes out of her shadow into Virgo. And this is an awareness about what we need to do, really. Uh, Pluto stations direct on that day as well. So add the power of Pluto station which is always means something big is going to happen and we can usually see it. And sometimes it's seismic. We also have the sun opposite Chiron on that day, becoming aware of the wound. On Tuesday, the 12th, we have Mars ingress into Scorpio. Mars has been in Libra for a long time, not particularly happy, did get its work done, I have to say, um, but now it's in its sign. Of Scorpio. This is, uh, there are some flashing lights to that, by the way. So just we'll deal with it next week. Deal with those flashing lights next week. On Friday, we have Mars making a trine to Saturn. This is very good because it focuses the energy of Mars um, with Saturn in Pisces. And then on Saturday, we have the new moon solar eclipse in Libra at 22 degrees of Libra, a child giving birds a drink at a fountain, the concern of simple souls for the welfare of happiness of less evolved beings who thirst for life's renewal. As, as scary as this might be, there's also the other side of that and it's, it's good, it's good. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this or got something out of it. Um, like and subscribe if you would. A thumbs up goes a long way to getting me into the algorithm if you think this information is helpful. If you would like to become a patron, I do have a Patreon page. The, all those links will be below. Um, and uh, that's what's going on. <laughs> all right, guys, have a wonderful month, or oh, a wonderful week, I should say. I'll see you next week. Uh, take care. Much love. Namaste.